Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this second session of chemical bonding. And today's topic is molecular orbital diagrams. I welcome all of you. And uh, as we know that in the previous session, we have understood the linear combination of atomic orbitals, basic assumptions of molecular orbital theory, along with the formation of bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals. So today, on the basis of molecular orbital theory, we will draw the molecular orbital diagrams for various homonuclear diatomic molecules. Moreover, by applying the principle of molecular orbital theory, we will be able to define certain characteristics or properties of the molecules and with a special emphasis on homonuclear diatomic molecules. So today, let us come to the agenda first. The first topic, we will start from order of energies of molecular orbitals, then molecular orbital diagrams for homonuclear diatomic molecules. We will calculate the bond order. Then through some questions and uh, some assignments, we will uh, commemorate whatever we have understood today. And then at the end, we will uh, take an overview of today's session. So let us start with the order of energies of molecular orbitals. Now, dear students, in the first session, you have already understood that how the atomic orbitals overlap, how the bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals are formed. Now, on the basis of that, we can understand that what is the order of energies of these molecular orbitals formed. Here in this diagram, in this slide, you can very easily see that in case of simple homonuclear diatomic molecules, the order is like this and which is especially for heavier elements. Now, what do we mean by heavier elements? Heavier elements means atoms from O2 to neon 2. That is the atoms having the, the molecules having the number of electrons 14 or more. So from oxygen to neon 2, we consider this category as the category of heavier elements. And for this, you can see that the order of energies of molecular orbitals is like this, sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, sigma 2pz. Here we have considered pz as present along the molecular axis. That is why it has been considered as sigma 2pz and not sigma 2px. So sigma 2pz, then pi 2px, pi 2py, which are present at the same energy level, followed by antibonding molecular orbital pi star 2px, pi star 2py, and then sigma star 2pz. So here you can see that this is the order which is being followed by heavier elements, right? Now, if we talk about the lighter elements, lighter elements means elements from hydrogen to nitrogen, which are below oxygen. So in that case, you can find a little difference. You can see that sigma 2pz has a higher energy as compared to the energies of pi 2px and pi 2py molecular orbitals. So the order comes out to be like this sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, sigma 2s, sigma star 2s. And instead of sigma 2pz being, uh, you know, at the lower energy level, pi 2px and pi 2py molecular orbitals are there. After that comes sigma 2pz, you can see here, and then followed by pi star 2px, pi star 2py, and then sigma star 2pz. So, uh, dear students, this is the order which should be followed while drawing the molecular orbital diagrams filling the electrons or writing down the electronic configurations. Now, if we come to the uh, molecular orbital diagram for homonuclear diatomic molecules. So, as we know that homonuclear diatomic molecules means the atoms are having the same electronegativities. So, the molecular orbital diagram which will be formed here would be symmetrical. You can see that both the atomic orbitals are present at the same energy level. You can find out here both the levels, the atomic orbitals levels, energy levels remains the same. This is the order of energies, right? So when both these atomic orbitals overlap, you can see that what happens, a molecular orbital, bonding molecular orbital formed, which is of lower energy, and another bonding, anti-bonding molecular orbital is formed, which is of higher energy, right? So if we consider this is sigma, sorry, 1s1, this is 1s1, right? 1s1 and 1s1. So what will we get? Sigma 1s. So this is sigma 1s and this is sigma star 1s. 
Now, in case of hydrogen molecule, there are two electrons, total number of electrons is two only. So, both the electrons will be present here because we have to follow three principles of Bowes principles, Pauli's exclusion principles and also the Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. So, this is the molecular orbital diagram for the hydrogen molecule, the simplest molecule. Now, when we are asked to write down the electronic configuration of H2, we can write in this manner sigma 1s2, you can see here sigma 1s2 and for sigma star 1s, you can see that there is not any electron here, you either you can leave it or you can write down here as sigma star 1s0, right. So, I hope it is clear to everyone that how we can draw the molecular orbital diagram. Now, bond order, what do we mean by bond order? So, bond order is 1 by 2 number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus number of electron in antibonding molecular orbital. Let us consider the example of hydrogen molecule. In case of hydrogen molecule, we have seen that there are two electrons present in bonding molecular orbital and there is not any electron in case of antibonding molecular orbital. So, when we find out the bond order in hydrogen molecule, it comes out to be 1. Right. So, in this way it shows that a stable bond is formed between hydrogen and hydrogen. So, this is a covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms there is a single bond and that is why hydrogen molecule is a stable molecule. So, there are certain information which are to be given with the help of bond order. We can find out some conclusions, we can arrive at some conclusions. If the bond order is 0 or negative right if the bond order is 0 or negative. We can easily say that it is unstable the species is unstable or we can say that species does not exist. Even if the bond order comes out to be any fractional value like 1 by 2, 1 by 3 and so on, then we can say that species may be less stable, but yes it exists. Similarly, when we talk about the bond orders 1, 2 and 3. So, in case of bond order 1, we can easily conclude that it is very stable and a stable bond is formed, a single covalent bond is formed between two overlapping atoms. If bond order is 2, then there would be a double bond and likewise if it is 3, there would be a triple bond between two overlapping atoms, right. So, these are the information that we can procure, we can obtain by calculating the bond order. Now, let us come to another example. Uh, we are considering here helium 2, formation of helium 2 molecule. Now, in case of helium, we know that there are two electrons. So, what is the electronic configuration for helium? Uh, if we write down the electronic configuration for helium, it is 1s2 only, right. So, when two atoms containing two electrons each overlap, again we will get one bonding molecular orbital the and the other as antibonding molecular orbital. Now, here in this particular case, we can see that the total number of electrons is 4. Now, again following the same principles of Bowes principle, Pauli's exclusion principle and Hund's rule, we are going to fill up the molecular orbitals. Now, total number of electrons is 4, so 2 electrons come here and 2 electrons come here. So, in very easily we can draw the molecular orbital diagram, you can use the circle or you can use the block or even you can write the draw the molecular orbital diagram in this manner. So, when we write down the electronic configuration for helium 2, you can very easily see that it is sigma 1 s 2, right and sigma star 1 s 2. Friends, you can very easily calculate the bond order. Here it has already been calculated. Bond order in case of helium 2 is number of electrons in bonding minus number of electrons in antibonding. So, 2 minus 2 divided by 2 it comes out to be 0. So, what is the conclusion here? Bond order is 0, therefore no bond is formed between two helium atoms. So, helium 2 does not exist, right. So, it is unstable and does not exist. This is the conclusion that we can draw with the help of this bond order. Okay, so we are coming to the molecular orbital diagram for oxygen molecule. We have considered it, we have kept it under the category of heavier elements, wherein we have already come to know that the order of energies of the molecular orbital would be in this manner. Uh, we have considered only two s atomic orbitals here, right. So, we are starting from two s only. 
we can see that sigma 2 s sigma star 2 s then sigma 2 p z pi 2 p x pi 2 p y pi star 2 p x pi star 2 p y and sigma star 2 p z. So, in this way when we consider the electronic configuration it comes out to be like this sigma 1 s 2 sigma star 1 s 2 which, ha which has not been written here you can mention here k k which shows closed shell first energy level is completely filled or you can add sigma 1 s 2 sigma star 1 s 2 and then you can go ahead sigma 2 s 2 sigma star 2 s 2 sigma 2 p z 2 pi 2 p x 2 pi 2 p y 2 and then pi star 2 p x 1 pi star 2 p y 1. So, what we can easily observe here is that these are half filled p orbital or pi orbital pi 2 p x and pi 2 p y these are half filled orbitals. Now, let us come to the nitrogen molecule. In case of nitrogen molecule you can see the difference when we compare its order of energies of molecular orbitals with oxygen molecule it is being considered as lighter element. So, in this particular case you can see that the energy of sigma 2 p z is higher than the energies of pi 2 p x and pi 2 p y molecular orbitals. And this is just because of the reason that there is mixing of orbitals, mixing of atomic orbitals in case of lighter elements and that is why we follow this order. Now, uh, you know in order to have a comfortable idea we can see that it or this order is 2 1 2 1 while in case of oxygen molecule it was 1 2 2 1. So, uh, in order to keep it in your memory you can uh, you know uh, memorize in this manner otherwise you know that uh, the energy of sigma 2 p z is higher in case of nitrogen molecule. So, another major difference that you can find out here is that there is not any unpaired electron present here in case of nitrogen molecule. You have seen that this is the uh, electronic configuration in case of nitrogen molecule. When we try to find out the bond order you can very easily see that it comes out to be 3, 10 which is the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus 4 which is the number of electrons in anti bonding molecular orbitals if it is divided by 2 as per the bond orders formula it comes out to be 3. So, what does this show that obviously, this is a stable molecule and the bond which is formed between 2 nitrogen atoms is a triple bond just because the bond order is 3. In case of oxygen molecule the bond order is 2. So, in case of oxygen molecule it would be O double bond O which shows that the bond order will be 2. Both are stable molecules one is having double bond and the other is having triple bond. In this table you can easily see that in case of nitrogen and N 2 plus there is a difference when we calculate the bond order. Bond order decreases from 3 to 2.5 when one electron is removed from nitrogen atom right. So, in case of nitrogen the bond order is 3 while in case of N 2 plus the bond order is lesser it decreases in case of N 2 plus when one electron is removed right. Why is it so? Because you know the difference in electronic configuration. In case of nitrogen there is no unpaired electron present and you can uh, you know compare the molecular orbital diagrams for both the molecules. In case of oxygen you can see that the bond order is 2, but when we remove one electron here which is being removed from this atom uh, molecular orbital. So, it comes out to be 2.5. So, here you can see that the bond order increases from 2 to 2.5 in case of oxygen molecule O2 and O2 plus. So, this is the difference that we can find out here. Now, if somebody asks you that why helium 2 does not exist, I am very much sure that you will be better able to answer that since in case of helium 2 bond order is 0 we can easily conclude that it is unknown molecule or it does not exist, it is unstable molecule and the bond order is 0 only. After this at the end of this session you must uh, give answers to some important questions. For example, we have already discussed here that with the help of molecular orbital theory explain why oxygen is paramagnetic while nitrogen is diamagnetic. I am pretty sure that you can very easily give the answer now. 
In case of oxygen molecule, we have already drawn the diagram and we have found that yes, there are two unpaired electrons present in case of oxygen molecule, while in case of nitrogen, there is not any unpaired electron. So, when we talk about the magnetic character, so it depends upon the presence or absence of unpaired electrons. So, oxygen is paramagnetic because it contains unpaired electrons, nitrogen is diamagnetic because it contains no unpaired electron. Now, the second question is with the help of molecular orbital diagram explain why helium 2 plus exists, why helium 2 does not. We have already discussed why helium 2 does not exist because its bond order is 0. So, try to find out the bond order for helium 2 plus, you will be able to know that it is not at all 0. So, it is a fractional value, it is 1 by 2. So, we know the information given by bond order if it is a fractional value if it is in points, then definitely it is unstable, but it exists. So, helium 2 plus exists because it is having the bond order 1 by 2. Arrange the following species in the order of their stabilities. What are those species? O2, O2 plus, O2 minus and O2 2 minus. So, what you will have to do? You will have to find out the bond order. On the basis of bond order, you can very easily draw some conclusions. So, bond order is directly proportional to the bond dissociation energy, bond dissociation energy. What does this mean? Bond order is directly proportional to the stability of the species formed or when we consider the relationship between bond order and bond length, we can see that it is inversely proportional to the bond length, right. So, in case of oxygen, uh, the bond order is 2, in case of O2 plus, the bond order is 2.5, in case of O2 minus, it is 1.5 and in case of O2 2 minus, it is 1. So, in that way, you can very easily, you know, arrange the species in the increasing order of their stabilities. Uh, dear students, today let us come to the summary. Today we have ended up with the molecular orbital diagrams of homonuclear diatomic molecules. We have also discussed the calculation of bond order, how important bond order is, we can predict the stability, we can predict the bond length, we can predict the bond dissociation energy of various species formed with the help of bond order and also we can draw a conclusion with respect to the magnetic character of various species formed. In the next session, we will be having a look on some questions related to this session followed by the information or uh, the formation of molecular orbital diagrams for various heteronuclear diatomic molecules. We will try to understand their properties as well on the basis of this molecular orbital theory. Thank you very much. See you in the next session of chemical bonding. Thank you.